Okay, the G20 Summit is just coming to an end. This is Stephen Gibbs here. I'm with Joel Richards, who's a correspondent for CGTN here in Argentina. We've been working very closely together for the last few days during this very, very packed summit. Um, it was only a little bit more than 24 hours, believe it or not. But what I was going to ask Joel about, because he's based here in Argentina, is what has this meant for uh, the country where you live and where you are married to an Argentine woman as well, so you know it better than uh, any of us. I imagine they've been looking forward to it, uh, or dreading it, some Argentinians I suspect, but uh, the government, talking about the government, they've been looking forward to this for a long time. What have they hoped to get out of it and do you think they've succeeded? Sure, you have to bear in mind a lot of things going on here for, for the government, because you, you touched on that, there's very there's mixed feelings about hosting the G20 here. So. If we go stick with the government's uh, view of, of what they've done, there's a sort of obsession about bringing Argentina back to the world. Right. Yeah. There's this feeling that for a long time they've been very isolated. Argentines, have, anyway, have a very strong sense of how geographically isolated they are. It's a long way um, from North America, from China. It's the furthest capital city away from Beijing. Right. So, so there's already a sense in the national psyche, if you like, that they're very isolated. And then you add on to that 12 years of Kitchener government, which um, had a very different policy, um, much more closed barriers, uh, and, and, and so on. So, so under Mauricio Macri, the, the government very much tried to open up the country, open up its economy, um, which in turn has had its own critics, mm -hmm. and it's open to debate about how successful they've been so far. With three years in, there's right. still a number of problems there. But the idea is to open up the country, open up its economy, and become reinsert itself into the world. That's kind of the catchphrase that they've had. So for them, it's been very important. What many people forget, perhaps, is that the G20 takes, takes place over the course of the year. There are over 80 meetings, ministers, cabinet ministers from all the countries involved, right. taking place in meetings across. So it's a big deal for the host, yeah. host country, even yeah. if bring, for other countries, not so much. Timing ended up a bit unfortunate because they were hoping that it would be the sort of relaunch of this new business-friendly Argentina, but uh, there's actually a big economic downturn going on. Unfortunate timing. Has that... Is that a big issue for the government and for the people? It, it, it hosting is. Hosting this extravagant thing in the middle of all that? Of course, and it's, mm. it would, they're, they're starting a very strong uh, budget, an austerity package right. uh, going into uh, next year. The, budget, the national budget for next year was approved very recently with pretty drastic cuts and across the board. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense that is uh, an event like this with spending hundreds of uh, well, millions of, of dollars at least in conservative estimates. There is a question about whether it's necessary, but, mm. but they'd argue well, they're hoping to bring a lot of investment through this. Obviously the international spotlight has been on Argentina, and they're hoping that the, what will come from that would be uh, much more positive than just the, the initial expense right. uh, anyway. But obviously the yeah. economic situation is difficult for a lot of people, yeah. and so there has been a fair bit of resistance right. to that as well. I mean, it has been a little bit of an advertisement for Argentina in many ways. One of the big things we saw last night, which for me was a bit of a highlight, was this gala theatre and music event at the, uh, the Colón Theatre, one of the sort of iconic theatres of South America. Uh, Maurizio Macri reduced to tears when everyone was sort of saying Viva Argentina. Um, again, that must have lifted the national psyche a bit perhaps, I don't know. Sure, in the era of social media obviously mm. any phrase or, or, or mm. event is, 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 is liable to memes and, and what have yeah. you. But, um, so that, but, but certainly it shows how much it meant to Mauricio Macri and um, uh, that's right, it was a spectacular show that they put on. Mm. Um, and I suppose it does give us a sense of how much they feel is maybe riding on this event. Yeah. I think they felt really this is, this is becoming you know, yeah. before and, and after for, for Argentina. Yeah. Uh, the economy hasn't gone so well in the first couple of years. Mm. So an event like this could be a turning point. Mm. And I think perhaps that was part of the, perhaps part of the emotion coming through. Uh, you know, the sense we've got here in just the last sort of few hours is, is they got away with it in a way. There was a feeling that the, the final communique would not possibly be agreed between all the sides. They have signed something, it's kind of a bit watered down perhaps of what uh, it could have been, but uh, also logistically everything functioned pretty well, certainly from the presidential point of view here in the media center. Everything pretty smooth, there were some patchy issues with the Wi-Fi, but apart from that, everyone got to the right place and went away. So. I think on balance, Argentina will look back at this and think, we're glad we did it. We well, agree. also, 
Absolutely. Don't forget that there was a real fear about security. Yeah, of course. At this, at this G20, obviously last year at Hamburg, there was a lot of violent protests. And there were real fears that that would happen here as well. Not least because of the big football match last weekend right. between River Plate and Boca Juniors, two of the biggest teams in the continent. They couldn't play the match because there was a the violence before that the team bus was attacked. So many people are saying, well, hang on, we haven't had this important football match. What about the G20? In the end, it was quite a small march. I was there yesterday covering it for the channel. A lot less people, really, than many other marches we've seen over the course of this year. Yeah. Um, but certainly there was the very isolated, just a few incidents, but very little. And I know certainly the, the, the authorities are very happy about that. They're really concerned about any potential problems. So that's another yeah. uh, positive. I mean, one sure. possible reason, partly for that, is, of course, one of the things about Buenos Aires and Argentina being a bit isolated. It's a long way for the sort of international uh, yes, uh, yeah. uh, protesters to come. But, but we've uh, seen like, quite yeah. difficult situations because of the national protests yeah, right, as well. Sure. So, so yeah. there is an element of that. I mean, I'm yeah. absolutely right with that. Yeah. And they themselves said they had this, this counter summit um, with academics yeah. and activists, and they were, they were saying we're probably not going to have that many people coming yeah. coming down. Here. So, uh, but it went well. Okay. Joel, thanks very much indeed. That is a wrap from the G20 summit. Thank you for watching. Uh, now back to the studios. Exactly.